Howdy, AP Pre-Kill. It's Ms. Cash. I wanted to make this video to help you with some of the calculator strategies slash tips um, when we're looking at this uh, graphing polynomial stuff. Okay, so some of this would be on the calculator part of the test and some of it would not, but I wanted to kind of put it all in one video for you. The first thing that they're asking us, now notice this equation is really gross because I wanted it to do specific things, so I played around with it for a while. Anyway, it took me a little bit to come up with the, the right equation for you, but there you go. And then this one is in factored form, so this you would definitely need a calculator to do anything with. Um, and this one, we can answer a lot of questions, maybe not all the questions, but a lot without our calculator. So I'm going to try and distinguish when we should be able to do it without the calculator and when we would use the calculator. To begin with, the first, um, it says to find the y-intercept. Well, the y-intercept is when x is equal to 0. So when I plug in 0 for x, this term is gone, that's gone, that's gone, that's gone, and I'm just left with negative 2. Okay, the next one, the g1, was a little bit more involved because I have a 1 fourth times, well, when I put in 0, I get negative 1 squared, which is positive 1. 0 plus 2 is 2. 4 minus 0 is 4. And then, well, a fourth of the, the 4 is cancel, and I'm just left with 2. Um, so straightforward, but don't, don't forget what the question is asking. Okay, so it says describe the end behavior for both um, f and g using limit notation. So this, we could do limit, uh, excuse me, we could do end behavior without a calculator. Um, so on this one, it's degree 4, its leading coefficient is positive. That means that we're going to say the limit as x goes to negative infinity of f of x is equal to, since it's positive and even, it's going to go to infinity in both. Um, if that's unclear to you, go find my video where I talk through this material. Okay, this one, I need to look at this. I see um, 1, 2, 3, 4 x's, so this is also an even degree. Notice this x would be positive. This x would, well, and there's two positive x's here, so positive, 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 oh, and a negative x. So now this is going to go, it's, um, it's even, but it's got a negative leading coefficient if we multiplied it all out. So it should go, so the limit as x goes to negative infinity of g of x is going to be negative infinity. The limit as x goes to positive, oh, I talked about that in class. If I write the positive sign, it's because I started to write a negative and made a mistake. Fair enough, I just did that. It also goes to negative infinity. Okay, so now they want us to identify any local extrema for both f and g on the domain of all real numbers. So here is where I'm going to grab my calculator. And so with this, I already typed them in, so you don't have to watch me. Um, I have them where they're not selected. You can see that the equal signs aren't highlighted. If I hit select, it'll turn that on for me. And so I don't know that I want to look at both of them at the same time. It's a little much, but I also don't want to take the time to, to type it in. Um, and so, oh my goodness, I don't even know what I'm looking at. All right, um, it might be helpful to, to make my y values go a little lower. It seems that there's a, a local min there. Um, it might be the absolute min. We can either just do g solve and find minimums. So if it's in, if my window has the domain where that, that minimum will show up, it doesn't have to be on the screen. So notice we've got, okay, so let me draw a line. We'll do f on one side and g on the other. And so I have a, what would we call, we, we have a, a minimum when x is approximately equal to um, negative 1.8092. Um, AP wants us to round to the third decimal place. My colleague recommends just writing four. Um, they want you either to round to the third or to truncate. And if you write out the fourth, then you don't have to worry about being wrong because they look at the, anyway, we're fine. Um, it's got this, um, it's got a minimum there, and this is, oh, but I just went over to the next one. And it's also got a local min when x is approximately negative, oh, I lied. Um, I was looking at the y value, so 2.1552. Okay, um, so identifying a local extrema on the domain, so that's where they, the minimums show up. Um, and then we have, we can go g solve max. Apparently it's thinking. Ah, there we go. Okay, so then we have a max when x is approximately 1.1541. Um, and these, this is definitely a local. This one right here, which was this one right here, is definitely a local min. Um, and this one, it's probably an absolute. But let's do, let's change our window. I can come here to the window. 
And let's make our Y values go a little bit lower. I don't, this may be way too much. But it looked like my X was fine. Okay, so we can't, we can still do our G solve um, max. It'll still find things for me. Oh, this is a tricky one and it's making it think. That number looks familiar. Um, we can still do G solve min, but now we can kind of see that yes, this one is the absolute minimum. Okay, um, then if I want to do G, because they asked me to, then what I can do, I can exit out of here. I can turn this one off. Let's not delete it because they're going to need me to do more with it in a minute, but I can turn this one on. And then I might do go to window and do a standard screen just initially. I don't really know what I want. Oh, that's kind of reasonable. Um, and so now I can find, I have a local, I can do G solve max. And there was a max, um, I had a max at x is approximately um, negative 1.1213. Um, and then what's y value? Let's see if I can remember that, 5.02. Okay, so if I come over here, the other one, oh, notice these are both the exact same, um, which tells you that they are both... Um, that this is the absolute max, but we have two absolute maxes because their y values are the same. So we're not necessarily used to that idea, but it's true that um, that is the absolute y value that we see ever. It just happened in two places. Okay, so we have an absolute max at that one, and the absolute max here is at 3.1213. And then we can go g solve minimum. I think it's that zero. It should be, ah, fair enough. Okay, so we have a local min when x is equal to one. Notice I'm using um, approximately versus equal, um, but uh, that was also the zero. We could see it in the factored form, which was convenient. Um, okay, so the absolute extrema, oh, guess what? I kind of already did that. Um, See above. All right. Um, identify the absolute. Now this is where the problem changes a little bit. So what we want to do is consider, okay, so they're talking about F. So I'm going to come back here. I'm going to turn off this one. I don't want that one anymore. I'm going to select this one. I'm going to draw. Okay, that's a, that's a pretty decent little window. Um, and so we're wanting to know what happens at the endpoints of negative 0.8 and 2.4. So one way I can do that is I can hit G solve and I can come over to YCAL. And what that's going to do is it's going to let me put in a, um, an X value and it will tell me the y value. Okay, and so um, I might want to write down, if you can see it, I might want to write down on here that at f of negative 0.8, my y value is approximately negative 3.9385. Okay, and then I can do the same thing. G solve, come over to YCAL. And the, the other one they wanted was 2.4, 2.4. And so at f of 2.4, it seems to be equal to negative 1.0656. Oh, you know what I should have done? I should have written down these other values. Um, okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write these down. This is all f on this side. So at, um, I want f of, well, this one, is this between these two worlds? No. You see what I'm talking about? I'm looking inside from negative 0.8 to 2.4. This one's inside that world. This one's inside that world, but that one's not. So I want to know what is f of 2.1552. I need to know how big that y value is. And I also need to know f of 1.1541. See what those are approximately equal to? Okay, um, so I think we found those by doing, um, well, one that was a min. Is it thinking? There it goes. Okay, um, this was outside my the window that they wanted me to look at, so I don't care about that one. But I do care about this one. This is this one right here. And so it's at negative 1.1297. Uh, and then the max, G solve max, this is the calculator, not me. I guess I'm making it work too hard. Okay, this value was about negative 0.08. Uh, oh, I lied to you. 
zero point eight, negative point okay i can't talk y'all i keep making these videos at the end of the day and that's bad news for me okay there we go there's my decimal point point um so now we're comparing these four values to see what's happening and so we want to look to see what's the absolute extrema so um and we're, we're kind of going from a 0.8 over here. It kind of goes up and then it comes back down. Let me do, let's do G solve. Um, let's do the Y cal at 2.4, kind of so we can see where it is, 2.4. Okay, so it's over here. Um, so it's on the other side of, of that minimum. But the 0 0.08 was more negative than that minimum which happened at this at this value right here so the absolute minimum so my little interval basically starts it's kind of hard to see it um it basically starts here oh i'm writing on my calculator and it goes to here so we have a local minimum in that interval but the um the end point here is lower than that so we have an absolute min um at uh an absolute min at x is equal to negative 0.8 and uh what is uh, identify the absolute extrema it happens here okay what's it, what is its absolute um lowest value it's this right here about negative four um and then we have an absolute max on that interval um when we look at this maximum value here so g solve max it's not the absolute max of the whole function but we we've narrowed the world we're living in Okay, and that's absolute max when um, at x is about uh, 1.1541. Um, another way to do this, perhaps, might be to come to our window and change our, our values to maybe just a tiny bit smaller. So negative 0.9 is a tiny bit smaller, and our max value is 2.5. We wanted to go from 0.08. I lied. Negative 0.8. Eight. <laughs> oh, you guys, I'm so sorry. Um, but anyway, so we can draw that. And we can kind of see what's happening a little bit better, that we have a, um, the, the minimum will be here, the maximum happens somewhere in here, and then we get dipped down to a local minimum, but then we go back up, but it, we don't go as high. I don't think we go as high as this value. It's hard to see in this scale. Um, if I'm wrong, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, all right, well, hang, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna double check. Let's, let's look and see how, um, how high was this one? This is that um, endpoint was at this negative um, one ish, and then my maximum here. is higher than that. Okay, it's less negative than negative one. Oh goodness. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's come back to let's go window, and we'll go back to that standard window because that worked relatively well for us. Um, so it says find the real zeros. Okay, so with my calculator, that is a gross equation, but I can do G solve root. All these pauses. I blame the calculator. I think well, I'm overworking the calculator. So I have a zero. This is for F. Um, I have a zero when X is equal to negative three. I think the other one is positive three. It is. It's plus or minus three. So those are my zeros for F. Uh, looking at for g, I can just look at the equation. I have a zero um, when x is equal to one. It has a multiplicity. You can't see what I'm writing, but I'm letting you see the equation. It has a multiplicity of two. x equals negative two, and x equals positive four. Um, I would say, in parentheses, this one has a multiple. There's an L, pretend, um, of two. If I don't write the multiplicity, it's implied to be one. So maybe I should say it, but there we go. Okay, so then the last question is, what's the maximum possible number of non-real zeros for x? Well, what happens here is that x is to the fourth power. So we would expect um, f to have four solutions. Well, we found two of them. And so at most, it can have two non-real. So it would have two real and two non-real, giving us a total of four zeros. So the maximum possible number of non-real zeros for f is two non-reals. Okay. Grab your calculator, go practice. This takes, it, it takes a little bit of time, um, but the more you practice, the faster you'll get. Good luck.